Hello everyone. Welcome to the Northwest Geology Guy. Hi, my name is Scott and I'll be your host tonight as we take a trip from the Northwest over to the Big Island of Hawaii and take a look at Kilauea. I'm sure all of you have heard of the massive eruption it's had and uh, 24 fissures opening up, destroying 700 homes or better. And let's go into it so we can see exactly what caused it. Is it going to erupt again? Is the eruption process over with? So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Um, in 1983, uh, we had a lava lake here in the crater of Kilauea at uh, Halimau Mau Crater. And over at Pu'u'o'o, uh, a, lava lake of, a lava lake formed and had eruptions that overspilled and went down the west side of the island. And that went on for 35 years until uh, the first week of May, I think it was May 1st or 2nd, the new eruption phase started. And we had lava coming from the main uh, lava or magma chamber flowing down the east rift here, down and opening up uh, 24 fissures, and fissure 8 being the very most active uh, fissure of the whole chain. And it's created uh, a lava, had a lava lake going on there, shooting up to 150, 200 feet high in the air. And uh, it created a, what they call a channeled lava flow that flowed all the way down into Pohoho, uh, where it reached the ocean and it created like it looked like just normal steam coming out of it as something very hot hit something a lot colder but actually what it did it created what's called a volcanic lays and that is basically hydrochloric acid uh, from the lava mixture with uh, or mixing with uh, the ocean water and it's very toxic very dangerous and the locals there know better to hang around there or be downwind of the of the lays. But almost all the activity was from the summit down the east rift zone. Only a little bit down here. Uh, no fissures opened up. Just some quaking. We did have a, a 6.9 magnitude uh, quake there that really got things going. And uh, I was speaking with uh, uh, Dr. Geology that used to work over there at uh, the HVO, the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory. And his belief is when we had that large uh, 6.9 mega quake, well, it wasn't a mega quake, but a large quake, um, opened up uh, a chamber somewhere down in the East Rift Zone down here. And uh, that just created a big pocket of... Uh, uh, for the lava to fill into to feed the rest of the the east drift zone down into the the fissures down here and after that happened there was a, a, a pretty sizable increase in uh, magma flow down here and um, they uh, at first when the eruption started it produced very sticky very slow moving and very odd lava that they hadn't really seen before in uh, past eruptions. Actually, what it was is lava stored in the East Rift Zone since the 1955 and 1960 eruptions. It kept it in the lava tube, uh, which basically that's what the East Rift Zone is, is a lava tube, and kept it warm enough there so it could still flow. And it really baffled the, the scientists at the HVO until they had one of the field crew members go down and take a, a hot sample of the lava. They throw it into a bucket of water, cool it, grind it up, and then uh, analyze uh, the chemical uh, compounds of the magma, and, or the lava, it's above ground. And uh, they found out it matched the same chemistry as the 1955-1960 uh, volcanic eruption. And so that's what, that's kind of solved that problem because it should have been really uh, thin, uh, hot, fast-moving uh, lava, but it wasn't. It was very sticky and slow-moving. So that's why, uh, or that's the reason why it happened like that. 
And then following that, after it exhausted uh, the reservoir of the old lava, the fresh magma came up from the main chamber and went uh, down the east drift zone. And then you start seeing more fluid, fast-moving uh, uh, channel lava lake uh, leaving uh, Fissure 8. The other la lava, uh, or the other fissures, did spew lava, uh, but nothing very noteworthy. Uh, it was headed towards the, the hydrothermal plant, but stopped maybe about 100 yards uh, or less uh, from covering up all the, uh, the wells there. And that could have been disastrous because it was, they're basically fracking around the volcano, which some believe might have caused this, but who knows? There's no evidence of what caused it, the change in the volcanic eruption process, but um, the plant survived. But we've had massive, massive, uh, massive uh, substance of the uh, of the crater. It's dropped down. Uh, it was kind of almost like every five days, it would drop down another ten to twenty feet uh, every time there was a around a magnitude five quake. When that would drop, that put pressure down here on the magma chambers as it uh, uh, compacted the the soil and bedrock and it acted almost like a, a baffle like a little foot pump when you're pumping up your raft as you step on it like that there was a surge of uh, pressure going down the east drift zone and coming out of the the fissures you could definitely see a, about an hour after uh, a large amount of substance at the crater you would see a, a surge of lava coming out of the fissures and that's what was causing that as it comes down on top of the magma chambers it just pressurized the the east drift zone or the lava tube going down there and uh just pumping out more lava going down the channel and then all of a sudden it just decided uh we had enough and it's, and slowly the the magma flowing down here stopped the magma chambers fissure eight the most active of all of them start dying down to where it just had a, a little uh, uh, luminescence in the bottom of the crater, which almost looks like uh, about a 90% uh, volcanic cone, like a stratovolcano, like Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens uh, type volcano. And then all of a sudden it just dried up and it's been kind of quiet. Um, the gas emissions out of the, uh, the summit uh, they say it's been right around 50 tons per day. To me, that sounds like a lot, but I guess uh, for Kilauea, that's not that much. Pu'u'o, the gas emissions and steam, have also been at a, a bare minimum. And just a little steaming here and there out of the fissures. But they have been noticing lately that there's been a, uh, some inflation in the East Rift which kind of tells uh, the scientists and us amateurs who have been studying it that if there's inflation, that means there's fresh magma entering the, the East Rift uh, conduit down here. And is it over? I don't know. Uh, for a while there, I thought, yeah, this is probably the end. And that all the substances that happened at the crater has pushed down and pinched off the entrance into the conduit to the east drift zone and is sitting on top of the magma chamber but they don't really know yet how this is uh happening um but we'll find out later usually by uh uh seismology they can use the seismographs to kind of read what's under the ground and that's what they've done at Yellowstone in particular, where they've been able to map out a much larger larger uh, magma chamber than they ever thought. But we'll see uh, if, it, if that's what happened. It's a possibility that the magma down here in the lower chamber uh, has eaten away here, so it opened up another uh, pathway down the East Drift Zone. Uh, that's very likely. Um, but also, the magma chambers here are very shallow. 
The upper chamber is only about 1.5 kilometers deep or kilometers deep, and the lower one uh, starts at almost uh, 3 kms deep. So these are very shallow, and it's fed from a hot spot down in the mantle that's created the whole entire uh, Hawaiian chain of the archipelagos. But um, I'm waiting to see more info out of that, and I may contact uh, Don Anderson uh, over there. He's kind of like their senior geologist over there. He did a lot of work around Kilauea, I mean, um, Mount St. Helens back in 1980. And the guy just seems to be extremely smart. I just love to listen to his lectures. But the seismicity around the summit is pretty low. It's been low for a few months. But let's uh, take a look over here and and see what... Uh, uh, oh, come on, load. There we go. There's a little, little bit of a look of... Uh, Fisher 8 and the big dugout where it was coming down so fast and furious out of here that it dug into the uh, to the dried lava over here and made a like a little pool over here. Let's take a little bit of a look over here uh, and see what it does. And this uh, video is courtesy of the USGS. But right down here is where the, let's get this to stop here so I can show you. Right down over here is where uh, the two main sources uh, of lava coming into it have fed. But I was thinking as if this would have lasted longer and we got more buildup right here in the, the gap of the horseshoe of the crater, that uh, it could have become uh, a stratovolcano, which would, is kind of what happened over in the, the Cascades where uh, we have Indian Haven Volcanic Field. It's a, a rare uh, shield volcano in the Cascades that are full of stratovolcanoes. But uh, we had the little shield volcano going on there, and it kind of looked just like Fisher 8 here. It built up a cinder cone that sits on top of the shield volcano, which is kind of odd. I've never heard of that before. But it was kind of interesting. But I, I thought I'd show you at least a picture Look how thick these walls of uh, the the fissures, the side walls, which strongly resemble uh, Mount St. Helens. Uh, it looks like a regular stratovolcano. But let's get out of this and go take a look over here at uh, the summit and uh, Halemaumau Crater. You can see how this is just dropped down here. And it's dropped even more inside uh, uh, of Halemau Mau, and it's we've lost uh, or is subsided around I believe 1,200 uh, feet, and that's a lot of substance, and uh, or subsidence. And let's go over here to an active uh, picture or a picture of the active fissure eight. And uh, it was shooting up between 150 and 250 feet at its peak uh, eruptive state. And, man, I, I would get up early just to watch uh, Scott. Uh, I can't remember his name. is uh, a tour company he has that it killed the tourism over there. So he just went in to start shooting uh, a ton of videos uh, of uh, the Lava Channel. And the locals there called Fisher 8. They refer to it as Big Daddy. And that's why. But let's go over and take a look at, uh, see a picture of uh, uh, the channeled uh, lava flow. It, it was very fast moving, very, very hot. It even uh, melted some of the, the old lava here. And we're sending it down, uh, they call it lava boat, uh, going down the channel. Uh, and it was about eight miles from... Uh, Fisher 8 all the way down into uh, Pohoho, uh, where we had the uh, ocean entry. But we go quickly over to the USGS uh, site for Kilauea. We're still at Yellow uh, Advisory, and it's just saying it's not eruptive. The seismicity and deformation in gases have not changed uh, significantly over the past week. 
It's been uh, very quiet. So thank you.